couple of a cultural shock and why was it difficult for you? There was a few cultural shocks when I got to Durban, yo. Go um, ahead, go ahead, I got nothing but I'm only going to name the, the, the one where we, where we played Islands Park. We were going on a, on a 3-4 game, um, losing streak, and then they got this Muti guy. Our general managers got the Muti guy, and we got the Muti guy. And this guy had a lot, um, this guy had a lot of rituals that he was going to do that day as before we played. He threw water in our, in our boots, he wet our, our playing kit. I am the one, I am the one, everybody duck My pawns on my echo wood, then I load a gun I don't need to stun, cause I am the one I do this for fun, I do this for fun I am the one, I am the one What's going on people? Welcome back to another pro show You have all asked for the show And today you are going to get it Ask and you shall receive Everybody has told me, you know what, Devin You've had so many guests on the pro show. When are you going to interview your best friend, Gregory? And we are doing it today. So without further ado, people, allow me to introduce the man, the myth, the legend, the man who has achieved so much in his career from the northern suburbs of Island Rovers to Santos. He's won countless top goal scorer awards. One most promising player at Santos and even carried Stellenbosch, who was an integral part as well of carrying Stellenbosch to the PSL where they are now. And now his career is even still going as long as it is. He is now in Josie. Gregory Rolf, my brother. What are you telling me, my G? Talk to me. How are you doing, my bro? I'm all good, brother. I'm all good. I just wanted to know, can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear, my G. I can hear you loud and clear. Don't stress. Oh, no, I'm all good, brother. I'm all good. good. Um, thanks for the intro there, my brother. <laughs> you like my intro? I don't want to give it to you that. You like my intro, huh? I'm always good yeah, for you're making me, Yeah, I was really old, you. Yes, sis. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, but, but, but let's say out by the coat. Um... So yeah, people, before we get into the show, you know what to do. Like, share, subscribe. I'm one subscriber away from 300 um, subscribers. So please take me to the promised land. And um, yeah, without further ado, Greg, there is a reason why um, I thought this show suits you perfectly because you've, you've literally been through a lot of transfers. You know the ins and outs. You've seen... Good transfers. You've, I mean, you've played at Steenberg, Richards Bay, Cape Moya. Um, I don't know if I'm leaving anyone out. Um, Islands Park. Too many clubs. Yeah, too many clubs. You too know. Too many so, clubs. Uh, I mean, if I'm gonna talk to anybody, <laughs> I need to talk to the man <laughs> that knows the best. So, gee, I'm not gonna waste any time. Let's get straight into it. Um, I want you to explain to me. What happens from the minute you get a call from your agent? Because before, um, of course, there would be a time where the club, another club, if they want to sign you, they first need to approach the club and then they can approach the player. But now these days, you can see clubs agreeing personal terms or players agreeing personal terms with two clubs at the same time. I mean, we can only have to look at Moses Caicedo and Lavia with the whole Liverpool and Chelsea debacle. So, Greg, explain to me what happens from the minute you get a call from your agent? Um, look, um, I wouldn't know the, 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 the process in Europe, but um, speaking on a South African perspective, um, usually the agents call the player um, and then the two of them talk about everything, you know, accommodation, um, salary, goal bonus structure, match bonus structure. So the two of you, the, the agent and the player talks way before the agent goes to the clubs, um, if you know what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. um, as soon as they're done, I'm talking about everything and then the agent goes to the club, goes with a proposal 
And if the club, um, whichever club the, um, the agent goes to and the club can't get to a, an agreement, it just moves on to another club. But a lot of things goes through. Um, it usually takes about two to three weeks. And you know, mm-hmm. as a player, during that two or three weeks, it's really stressful because no. you don't know where you're going to end up, you understand. And at the same mm-hmm. time, you need to train on your own. So... It's, um, it's a difficult um, time for the player, though, as I would say from my experience. But mm. what happens in trans is that the agent always gets the best deal for his player. Um, okay. In South Africa, I've, I've had the experience with an agent where he was um, more important than his players. <laughs> mm. If I'm sounding correct now, he was more important exactly. than his players, then he would like go for, for, he would rather choose the club for the player that gives the most agent fee. So okay. it's, a, it's a difficult process, but um, like I'm telling you now, the agent first speaks to the player, and from mm-hmm. there, the player, um, the agent takes it to the clubs, who, whoever's interested, and then they go for the, for the one that um, is going to meet the player's demands, and then they just sort out the paperwork afterwards. So I know more. You mentioned something very much important um, in terms of bonuses and that type of thing. So I'd imagine that forms part of personal terms, uh, I'd imagine, but... Yeah, it your... forms part of personal terms with, but... um, with that's I will tell you, like, for instance, mm-hmm. say you play, the, before you sign the contract, they say, if you play 15 games, you will increase your salary by so much and so much. Okay. If you score a certain amount of goals, we'll give you a bonus so much and so much, you understand? 100% so with you. All of, all, of that, all of that falls into personal terms, yeah. All of that. So basically bonuses, um, where you're going to love, that type of thing. Yeah. Everything. Okay. Like if you look at Neymar's, Neymar's contract in Saudi, I can't compare to South African football. But <laughs> I was all about that to say, that, bro, are you going to go uh, there now? <laughs> <laughs> you can't compare no, it to no, South I'm African kidding. football. <laughs> but you're right. I get where you're going. I get where you're going. <laughs> but did you see afterwards when everything mm. was sorted, his personal terms were sorted, he agreed and he left. You understand? Exactly. Nobody's going to say no to those personal terms, though. Let's be honest with you. Yo, I wish a Saudi team could come get me at this age, bro. <laughs> Yo, be it. You Yo, bro, won't hesitate, bro. bro. I also won't hesitate. Money talks, bullshit walks. Speaking of which, did you see what the Salah thing? Did you see um, Saudi won Salah now and Salah is willing to go play there? Yeah, and look here, you know what? Um, that's going to be sad for the Liverpool supporters because they're going to lose a lot of goals. <laughs> most stats. For the last five years, most stats has been oh, consistently, you understand? And with him, he's never going to say no for Saudi. as in a oh, Muslim yeah. country. That's what I was about to say now. It's a Muslim country as well. So, But mm. yeah, we'll, we'll talk. We'll touch base on the European football later. Um, right. So... <laughs> we're coming to that don't worry I have an apple to peel with you about your own personal club but we're getting there <laughs> so now you've agreed personal terms the club have agreed a fee um, I would imagine the next step is the medical first question what happens during a medical why would a player fail a medical um, the reason when, when a player fails a medical is probably still injured you understand he may be still nursing an injury Hoyland, that's, what basically. I would, that's what I would Hoyland. say. And then secondly, maybe the, the player has a heart problem or something small. And the third one would probably be drugs. You understand? Mm, okay. So usually the process is um, when you go for a medical, they test your blood. They check your, um, your pulse or what, your pulse or whatever. Pulse, <laughs> what is <man>. that? <laughs> Fuck us, pulse. Sorry. Your... Bye, man. It's a fake channel. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry. Bye. I was with you. Know, I... <laughs> but yeah, they test all that stuff to see. And then afterwards, they ask you tricky, like not tricky questions, but they ask you mm-hmm. um, questions about your history with your health. You understand? Okay. So that's about it that happens in the medical. That's most of it. So basically, like any underlying conditions that you had before that might affect you. Yeah. So similar exactly, to, yeah. So and it's up to the club discretion whether they're gonna accept you. Basically. Yeah. Exactly. The reason why I'm exactly. saying it is because Kano had a heart issue when he signed for Arsenal. Arsenal took him. Remy um, had an issue as well. He was at the Emirates, but we didn't want him because of that issue. Do you know what I mean? And now with Oiland recently mm. with his back, basically, is that why? At the club's yeah. the final. 
Okay. Yeah, but uh, some some clubs, sorry, sorry, some no, clubs do ahead, take you ahead. with your condition because maybe mm. in that time that you are there by them, they can help you understand. Treated, basically. Yeah. In it, did you ever had that experience? Ah, uh, not really. None of not that really. experience. Else, I wouldn't have been so long in the game. <laughs> okay, say no more. Okay, you must have fucked that guy. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Um, what was, now we're going to come to the transfer itself, and now we're going to come into, dip into Gregory himself. First question that I have, and you know me, mm. I like to ask the difficult questions. What was your most difficult transfer? You don't have to name the club. Um, but if you are comfortable naming the club, by all means, go ahead. But what was your most difficult transfer? And talk me through it. Um... Probably in 2016, if I'm not mistaken, 2016 or 2017, mm. when I had to leave to Durban, I think that was the most difficult transfer for me because um, at that time I was only playing in Cape Town. I never left Cape Town yet, you understand? 100%. So for me, leaving to Durban and going to another um, city and, and adapting, you understand, to a new culture, that mm. was very, very difficult for me. It mm -hmm. took me longer to adapt in urban than I would adapt here in Jumbuk. So I'll probably say the one leaving to Durban, and I won't mind naming the club, um, but it was Richard Bay United. Um, Richard Bay FC. Okay, say no more. Why was it difficult to adapt um, to the culture? Give me an example of a time when you faced a massive um, cultural shock. You just mentioned you've played it. You've just had to leave because obviously um, it is a difficult thing. I mean, you're comfortable in Cape Town and that type of thing. So yeah. why was it difficult? So basically it was culture because, I mean, the richest way community accepted you. I know that personally. So, But obviously it was a cultural shock for you. So give me an example of a cultural shock and why was it difficult for you? There was a few cultural shocks when I got to the venue. Go um, ahead, go ahead. I got nothing but I'm only going to name the, the, the one where we, where we played Islands Park. We were going on a on a three four game um, losing streak, and then they got this Muti guy. Mm -hmm. Our general managers got the Muti guy, and we got the Muti guy. And this guy had a lot. Um, this guy had a lot of rituals that he was going to do that day. As before we play, mm -hmm. he threw water in our in our boots. He wet our, our playing kit. Yeah. Um, the Friday before the game, the guy was also there. But I never went in because I never experienced it. On match day, I only experienced it. Mm. Where we had to go sit in a bath, brother, with four candles. You just get into dirty water and then you um, get into the bath. You um, throw the water over you and then you go dry or shower yourself um, afterwards. Mm. And then the next day or that same day when we played, my whole body was weak. <laughs> sure, I was about to ask, I didn't affect like, your game though. It affected my game big time, brother. To be honest with you, it affected my game so bad that um, they wanted to take me off before half time, but they waited the half time to take me off because uh, I drank all the energy, like the energy stuff that to boost me and everything. Uh, but I just felt weak, my brother, yo. Sure. And that I think that was the most difficult cultural change for me because I wasn't used to that stuff in Cape Town. I've only heard about it. Mm. You understand? Yeah, I know we are about and, that, that shit. Yeah. And, I wouldn't, and I wouldn't going to Durban to experience, to experience going to Durban and experiencing um, those cultural changes was really shocking. Mm. But after two, three months, um, I started to adapt. And that's how the, 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 the crowd and the, the fans started to get to me because, not get to me, I um, started to like me because I started winning you them over. It, you embraced the culture, basically. You embraced it. You adapted to yeah. it. Yeah. Hundred percent. Afterwards, I started to adapt. Yeah. Oh, another but question. To be honest why, with you, um, that's um, that oh, moving yeah. to Durban and the cultural change was the ultimate peak. Uh, yo, yo, I, I fear I wouldn't fear any player from Cape Town moving over. I just yeah. say rather just have a big heart and do it, bro. <laughs> no. Look, would you say it made you more? Um, because you experienced <clears throat> that, it made you a stronger person because now you feel you can adapt wherever you go. In South Africa, basically. Like a yeah, boy. exactly. I fully yeah. agree with that. It made me stronger. And it was, um, to be honest with you, with that experience, what I've experienced in Durban, made mm. me stronger. So that's why it's so easy for me to adapt in Joburg. Mm. Because 
I've been through that. What I saw what happened in Durban and mm. it's not happening as much here in Joburg, but whenever it happens, I'm, I'm, I'm prepared. I'm mentally ready you, for it. You're comfortable. You've so, been through it as well. Yeah. No, I think that's a good thing, actually. Look, I've, I've been there and I've seen how you've embraced it and how they've embraced you as well. Um, and I suppose it's like that with everybody in work as well. You know what I mean? I've worked with yeah in places where there's predominantly yeah. Muslim people. So I didn't know much about the Muslim culture until I worked with them. And it's the same with the with the with the Kosa um culture as well. So so big ups to you. Yeah. Another question though. Um I'm gonna come a bit now to family life. Of course, you've got two beautiful sons. Um, one who's my godchild, and the other one who is, I like to call my rascal. Um, but at the <laughs> time, and you've got a beautiful partner as well. Have you ever thought of moving um your partner and your son up with you? Um, to be honest with you, they had crossed my mind many a times before. Honestly, just to bring them over to. To this side, just to make my life much, much more easier. You understand? Because there's course. there's certain things that that a woman can do that you as a man on your own can't do. You understand? And vice okay. versa. Facts. So, um, to be honest with you, I, I, I've, I've, we thought about it, or I thought about it of bringing them over. But at the end of the day, I was thinking, um, bringing my partner over for her, leaving a job in Cape Town. To come this side and it's only maybe a year contract or two year contract. If I'm yeah. done playing and the team doesn't want me anymore, does she leave a job again here on the side? You know what I'm trying to say? And then as exactly. A, yeah. yeah. As a as a crazy, as a crazy um if you think about it, it's really crazy. But um yeah, I've th- I thought about that, but um I thought mm. that it wouldn't be a good idea, man. But to be yeah, honest 100%. with you, um I do really miss them a lot. Yo. Mm. Stuff, now, yeah. now the reason why I'm asking is because I had um Grant Magaman on the show um a few uh, months ago and at the time because he was on loan, um mm. I mean you know he was on loan from Sundown, so I asked him um yeah. would he think about it and whatever and he gave me the exact same answer as well until he get you get that stability if I if I'm making sense yeah. from a family perspective yes. it helps you. If you're happy off the pitch, you can be happy on the pitch. And exactly, you only have to look at Grant now. He's... Now that he's got his personal contract by Super Sport now, his permanent contract now yeah. for three years now, and we his, can move. And his family is there. And his, his family, family is, is there. there. And he's buzzing. He's <laughs> buzzing. Yeah, <laughs> my guy. Big up, Master Magaman. <laughs> but, G, before, uh, yeah. that's not enough of my look questions yeah. for now. Okay. Go ahead, Len. Okay. Land, land, I, no, I wanted you to go back. I wanted to go back. I was wondering now the other day, so I spoke to Junaid, and I was wondering why they call him Pac-Man, man. For Grand I, 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 I was wondering why they call him Pac. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it is the way he played. How he glide past people. Did you? <laughs> you is nothing. Uh. <laughs> Brilliant, my bro. That's why I tell you, it's my favorite midfielder, bro. I don't care what that was. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. That's my Anyways, favorite bird field of that bug has been, that bug <laughs> among you. I like him. But he's a technical person of the I pitch as well. I like, I like chatting to him. Oh, but yeah. Gregory, before I come on to the rest of my questions, there are a few um, people who, once they got word of the show, they have said, listen, ask him this question. Um, so brace yourself. Um, so I like to call this the fan forum. So I'll start with no Laik Field. Laik Field, you know him. Um, we played together at school level. Le- yeah. Say it again. Lincoln Field. <laughs> there you go. There he is, you know, uh, my skipper. And I think it was important um, that I started with this question because this is an absolutely brilliant question for me, Gobs. Because it not only relates to a northern suburbs perspective, it relates to football in Cape Town. Um, because yeah. you and I both know the development structures in Cape Town um, can be improved. Let me put it here like that. So, yeah. the next question was, and this was his exact words to me, when he watched you in the PSL and even when he watches you to this day playing at a professional level, you make it look so easy. And then 
Uh-huh. If you look at um, youngsters now in the Northerns, because he's still playing in the Northerns League, and then, I mean, Greg, you know, you've played with players that, um, let's be honest, you weren't the best player at Islands. There was Aesters, yeah. Lenta Makoba, yeah. and all of that. Um, yeah, and sure. now, right now, do you know what I mean? Shawnee and Tabisa. So now we call, we like to, like, if you see them, like, we say, yo, wasted talent. What could he have done differently? So, like, his question is, what can youngsters do differently to make it as far as you have? And what can development mm. structures in Cape Town do differently so they can get the next youngster to be the next Gregory Rolf? What did I want to tell you? Um, to be honest with you, that's I feel that um, it's not the youngsters' problem in um, the Western Cape. I feel as the, the clubs and the people in Cape Town to open more academies, man. Do you know what I mean? At least two or three okay. more academies so that I the youngsters it. from the communities... You understand? So that the youngsters from the communities can go into the, the academies and just get better and go leave Cape Town, leave, go to Europe. You understand? But because there's only one or two, I think, Ubuntu and Cape Town Spurs. Yeah, but, if and think, Ubuntu started a woman's... Nah? Um, a woman's and Stellenbosch. Um, mm. also and Stellenbosch, I think. Mm. Yeah, that's the three only distribute um distribute um distributors of youngsters by that academy, you understand. So if we can open or if, if Cape Town, the people, the coaches or the, the owners in Cape Town can open more academies, it will be much better for the youngsters to make it as far as most of the players, you know, you know you have a lot of friends playing in the top flight. It will be easier for them to make it to the big league. So I feel as 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 not the 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 youngster in the communities playing for the Island Rovers, the Centrals, the Matros and then. I don't blame them. They can only give their best locally. Mm. But if no one is gonna see them, how they're gonna get where they want to be. Do you understand? Exactly. So it starts the grassroots so level. I feel, uh yeah, I feel like grassroots le- grassroots levels they can improve with the, with maybe opening another two or three academies. It will be much um it will be so good for Cape Town so that the youngsters can all just breathe through and go places like, like most of your friends went, you understand? Mm. Facts. Agreed. I couldn't have summed it up any better because I share that exact same opinion. Now we're going to come exactly. to... So, go ahead. Yeah. You were going to say I something? say exactly. Yeah, You're right. I exactly. I agree, I agree with you. With you. 100%. 100%. And I won't lie to you. I've been watching a lot of... Northern suburbs football, grassroots football, and I won't lie to you. I enjoy it. I'm not gonna lie to you, but there's some bad boy players <laughs> there. And, and you think to yourself, yeah, damn it though. Quality. What, quality, what quality, next for you? Bro. Now, um you must know there is a Mrs. DVD TV as well. Um, I don't wanna name her, but she's got a few questions for you. She's got like five here, which relates to your fitness. Um so she yeah. wants to know, yeah. how often do you practice and train in a day? How long and how many times a week? That's the first one. Um, we, we train once a day. Sometimes it will be two, which, we, which will be from 10 o'clock till 12. And from half past two to half past four. Okay. If we train once, you can go on your own. And go gym later the evening. Do you understand that? So it will probably be twice a day, from Monday to Friday. Saturday, mostly Saturdays and Sundays is our games. So okay. some sometimes we train a whole week if we play on a Sunday. Okay. We, we'll train maybe from Monday to Saturday if we play on a Sunday. Um, if we play on a Saturday, it will be from Monday to Friday. Then we get the Sunday off. Mm. So it's, it's almost like a full time job, but just that we train less hours um, during the day. Like, say, for instance, mm-hmm. if you only train once, it will be from 10 to 1 o'clock. It will be done for the day. Okay. Cool. Next question that Mrs. David DTV has asked is, since he is new <laughs> to the team, is he accepted or does he need to prove his skills first to gain the respect of his new teammates? So, basically... If you are um, new to a new club, are you accepted? Do you need to first prove your skills, obviously? And how do you basically reg- regain the respect of your teammates? Because obviously there's certain... When you go to a club, I'd imagine um, you are the new guy. There is another striker there. 
there's a defender, you know, mad it gets in trials. These guys yeah. want to take you out because at the end of the day, this is a new guy coming in here. He's got a reputation, obviously, of course. So. Yeah. But I feel um, that's a very good question of her because I feel regarding a football professional, a professional football player, um, every week you have a test mm. because you're only as good as your last game, you understand? So, for instance, say you have a good game or let me rather go back to this first to our first question. Um, yeah, you have to prove yourself. Mm. Even if you know people there or at the club or coach or the owners, you still have to prove yourself because they're paying you big money, do you understand? There's no way we can rest on your laurels. Facts. 100%. Next question. I basically know the answer to this question. Do you take supplements <laughs> during training or a game? If so, and which ones? There's, to be honest with there's only a recovery shake. <laughs> That's for after That's games okay. because, yeah, there's only a recovery shake um, regarding me. But it's usually um, what I've seen with most of my teammates over the years, what they've done, they have a, a mass builder, mm. they have a recovery shake, and then they have a, 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 a normal shake, um, cool, uh, not cool drink, uh, a powdered um, thing that you throw, throw in water just to give you energy before training. So there's some players that take about three shakes a day. Oh. Yeah. So I'm only, I'm only using one because of my age, and I feel that a recovery shake will help me way much, much better. Okay. Say no more. Next question. Is there a specific diet that you follow? There's a, for instance, if you someone that picks up weight very quick, then there is a specific diet that you need to go on. And no, but we have fast metabolism. To, like people like yeah, like if you have a fast metabolism, it's not really needed. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. But if you someone that picks up weight quickly or you gain yeah or you gain weight quickly, you definitely have to go on the eating plan and, and I feel the club they 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 can see it or they can monitor you and then they will put you on, on a program. So, oh, so it's personalized by the is it's personalized by yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you could it. So no more. Last one from Mrs. DVD TV. What injuries <laughs> have you had? I like it if you team? say that, man. <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, I can't reveal her name, my brother. You know why. <laughs> and you know, you know, I come now. Why are you laughing? Last question. Nah, don't laugh, man. <laughs> what injuries have you had since playing and how long did it take for you to recover and what was the worst injury? I feel she jinxed you with this one, actually, when she asked me this last week. You know it. Yeah, I was also, in my notes, I was also writing down. Um, <clears throat> it isn't something that I really want to speak about, but I never had any serious injury in my whole career. Mm -hmm. And I think, to be honest with you, that's where the longevity comes in. Mm -hmm. Because if I, if, I, if I can really think about it now, my last heavy injury that I had was my collarbone, and that was before I signed pro. Yeah, it was at Ireland still that you had that. We yeah, still use the normal injuries where um, your ankle swell and that, it usually mm -hmm. takes me two to three weeks, a month max. Yeah, so you but could, other if, than if, that, I, I never really Probably your back injury. last week, but that, was, that wasn't it. That was a minor one. <laughs> Stuff you put on my back is not good. But to eh? be honest, yeah, to be honest with her, um, with Miss Devi TV, um, to be honest with her, um, I never had a, a heavy um, injury in my own career and that's, that's where the longevity comes in, and I'm very grateful for that. Yo. So no more. That actually is a perfect segue to our next um, fans forum. The Heine, the Heine, the patented Heine. <laughs> two questions for you. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. 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 It's serious. <laughs> we fucking played them. We fucking played them. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take this spot now to a whole different level. Um, <laughs> I'll start with this first one. Um, what is the secret to your longevity in the game? Because certain players your age are now working for companies and in factories. That's a direct quote. So would you say also the injuries and what else? Besides the fact um, that you, you, you dodged a lot of injuries, if I could put it like that. but yeah. Besides the fact that I dodged a lot of a lot of injuries over the years, the 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 secret to my longevity, um, I would really I was thinking about it now the other day. 
um, when I was sitting with myself and I was thinking, Arrow, what what has been the the I don't know how to say it now, but I'll rather I'll really say is my mentality, man. Mm. To be honest with you, I really have a steel cage mentality, and I, will agree. I feel with that steel cage mentality has been carrying me across my whole career. Really, I've mm. been strong mentally mm. with disappointments, with salary disappointments, and all that. I feel that um, the one thing that I can really take for my career um, or the long give it my longevity for my career has been my mentality. Mm. Honestly, no, I'll agree with that. No, I will. I can testify to that. Last one, I'm from <laughs> the Heine. You're just low. I'm a, am I a joke to you, Green? That's <laughs> <laughs> right. No, you're like a host, man. You're a huge, <laughs> you jump in the air, man. <laughs> Why is it difficult for okay, Cape-based players to make it in Josie and Durban, etc.? So what Heine is basically trying to ask is why do 70% of the Cape-based players that go Let's say to a Josie at Cape Town abroad, why don't they make it then all of a sudden or a season later or after a few months they find themselves back in Cape Town? Um that was that was that was really that was something that when I was at Santos, that was something that was really eating my mentality as well. Um playing out of the playing out of Cape Town and go try testing myself in different cities. Mm-hmm. I feel that uh, most of them are also um, come back to that mentally weak regarding if things don't go right for them when they leave to Joburg, Durban or mm-hmm. Polokwane, whatever. If things don't go well for them, they 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 don't hesitate to come back home. And when it's going so difficult at times, that is actually a time that you must stay to get actually stronger. You know what I'm trying to say? 100%. So mo- most of them, when, when, when things go a bit tough or um, when things don't go their way, then they tend to always run home. And when they run home, then they always want to blame um, as um, it was in the or it wasn't the on mm-hmm. that side or this and this. They always look for for excuses. Mm. You understand? Not, and I feel that yeah, I with most Catonian players, with most yeah. Catonian players, that is the downfall. Yeah, no, 100%. I've, I, can't, I can count on my hands how many times I've heard... Um, players that go there that side and they come back then I ask why did you come back you were you were then you were you had a platform to do well there then they would say the grass isn't greener on the other side then my my response to that would be is the grass is fucking greener when you wear water brother what the fuck yeah, exactly why are you, why are you yeah these yeah. players that I've seen here on this side that would kill to be in your position and you just yes. okay, no. do you know what I mean exactly then yeah. then then after a few years the answer will always, when you ask them again, yeah, and they would say, yeah, man, they, they always come with excuses, but there was other people that wanted to be in their shoes exactly. or that wanted the opportunity. Always no. remember that. Max, no, so it's 100% mentality. Um, Last one, before I get on to my questions again. Benny Blanco. So people, please go and subscribe to Footy Therapy as well. Um, Benny B, um, his question is, happiest you felt when leaving a club and saddest? So, in terms of happiest, I want you, to, I don't want you to mention a club. I want you to mention the situation. I want you to talk to me about what was going through. Can I mention the you... club, please, man? Okay, mention the club. I don't, I, uh, if, you, if you're comfortable mentioning the club, only if you are comfortable, then, and then obviously okay. saddest. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, happiest, obviously I'm going to say this, the happiest was signing at Stellenbosch. Ah. I think that... Happiest that, leaving. That, leaving. I'm talking about leaving, eh? Oh, oh leaving. Stellenbosch is sad as leaving. <laughs> sad as leaving. Wait, wait, yeah, sorry. I said leaving. Le- leaving. Oh, oh, I didn't hear you there. Sorry. Leaving, so uh, happiest leaving? leaving has to be Santos. Okay. It has to be Santos. Why? Do you want to dig into it? Just leave it at that? No, we can get into it. We can get into it. Um, so why were you happiest leaving uh, Santos? Yo, I, yeah, I had a six-year deal there at Santos. Yo. Jesus Christ. After that, six, after that six years, only three years was, was where I enjoyed myself. Jesus, the other three I couldn't months. leave. I felt like I was in jail. 
I'm back, lad. So I'm for three way. years, like for instance, I won't lie to you. Um, I'm I'm gonna mention the team. Okay, I already mentioned the team. For three years, I probably played nine games. Mm. I know you. Yeah. For three years, you understand. So yeah. that was that I was the happiest leaving. And 2016, when I left, I started to 2010. Mm. To 2013, How old were you when you signed that contract? How old were you when you signed that contract, Belgi? 21. I was 21. Yeah. Like and I left them when I was 26 or 27. If I may ask, so, was, the salary, was the salary lucrative at the time? Look, I know inflation is counting was, now. For me, um, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't one of the best. No. Honestly, it wasn't one of the best, but money was never an issue with me at the time. For me, it was more about the opportunity. Do you understand? Mm, no facts. 100%. So I went for the opportunity and Afterwards, as I played more games and in that three years, things were going rosy for me. It was nice. They even sent me on loan to Vasco as well. Mm. But when I came back from my loan from Vasco, I was where the jail started till 2016. Jeez. So the happiest leaving, I would go with Santos. Saddest? Saddest is Stellenbosch. Yo. <laughs> Talk me through that. Talk me through that. I love that club. The reason being with Stellenbosch says is because at the age of 30, I would get in that second opportunity to play in the PSL again. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even if I had to, um, I will always say it and I'm going to say it again, even if I had to get the same money that I was getting in the NFD, but that mm -hmm. opportunity again in the PSL would have been beauty. Mm -hmm. um, it would have been nice for me, especially at that, that age. At that age as yeah, well. Yeah, and I felt, and I felt you that shogun knife where they stabbed me in the back asses. <laughs> I'm still bleeding. It's <laughs> uh, part, part, part of the game, my guy. It's part of the game. It's part now of the game, on, brother. <laughs> yeah, now we're coming on to my last three questions, or four, I would say. Your most influential coach in your career. Well, name me three or two, but you don't have to give them in any particular order. Bubi Solomons. Mm -hmm. Bubi Solomons, number one. Mm-hmm. I'll go number number two. I'll go with Steve Barker. Okay. And number three, I will go with um, Coach um, Ronnie. Coach Ronnie from Summerfield Dynamos. That's the three. Say no more. I know which one. I know this answer to this one. Best goal. <laughs> <laughs> I know which I know the answer to this one. Um, best goal 2016. No, 2017. The 3rd of March 2017 against Tax for Riches Bay. We won uh, one all that, that day. That's, that's in the montage <laughs> as well, my bro. That's in the montage. Yeah, that is that's there in the, in the archives. That, that's there, my bro. That is, like, how do they say on Super Sport? You'll see it once. <laughs> You'll see it once. <laughs> but okay. there's one person. There's one person that was there that day, and he can voice for that one. And I think that's Mason October. Yeah, you he can voice for that one. You played for Tax, no? Yeah, he was. He was playing. He was playing left back for Tax at the time. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> um, <laughs> lowest point in your career, and what was the main factor to help you get out of that slump, if I could say? Lowest point in my career was the last three years at Santos, and mm. I think I was going on. You know, I wouldn't. It was. It was a heavy slump. So I would say that slump went on from 2014 to 2016, where Arad was non-stop drinking. Sorry to say it now. It was non-stop no, drinking. Mm -hmm. um, the, the only way with the, the, the only way, and this is where I respect Coach Bobby Solomons because he left um, Santos at 2016. In 2016, he left. Mm -hmm. And wherever, when for the next club that he signed for, I was I was I was his second signing, and he gave me that hope again, you know, that light mm. to do yeah. well again. Because in that two years, I lost it, yo. No, no, you <laughs> can't lose it. it. You know, I think I only, I was only scored one goal in that three years, you know, and as a striker, mm. goals um gives you confidence. You know what I mean? Back, back. And nothing was going my way, so that was my lowest point, and um for giving me that belief again and giving me that faith. That is where Booby Solomon's come in. So I put him down as, as my number one influential coach. 100%. Last one from the fans forum. 
Um, this is from Mr. Martin Souls, Uncle Martin, as you would know, my favorite Spurs character. Uh, Do you have any plans on retirement and will <coughs> you go into coaching? That's the main, that's the, I, I saw that question now earlier when you, when you sent everything to me. Mm -hmm. um, to answer Uncle Martin's question, I'll definitely go into coaching because for me now, they are Dutch. To give 13 years for football and to give nothing nothing back to the youngsters with my experience that I gained. Do you understand? So right. for me, I would love to give my experience back to the boys. Yeah. And I would definitely do my best to stay in the game. For no, me, now to go sit in front of a computer, I'm not saying it will be bad. Or, do you know uh, what I'm trying to say? But no, I that's, not your, that's not for you. I know what you It's mean, not my man. forte, brother, man. You understand? No, facts. Now the question, though. If you should be a coach. You know, when we played, you would get that coaches. We played in an era where um, this question literally just came to me now because I would have I would have sent it to you. But you know, when we played, the coach would swear at you, man. You know what I mean? Like, yay. I was about to ask you now, do you have load shedding? Switch on a light day over dung, man. <laughs> but you said so. Anyway, you yeah, know, when we, played, um, when we played, we, the coach would tell you, hey, you catching on fucking shit, man. Devi, what the <laughs> you Greg, wake up. Do you know what I mean? Mm. But now, obviously, the players of today, they say that you need to put an arm around them. And like today, even like, I saw it last week when I was at Salbro. Um, one player even said to a coach like, but you gave me a funny look. Do you know what I mean? Like the coach didn't even realize yeah. that he gave him a funny look. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. obviously the game has changed since that time that we were obviously yeah. playing junior days or whatever. Yeah. What kind of a coach would you be? Because sometimes you need a good, you know, you need that one that's yeah. going gonna to stick it on you, you know? Yeah, but that that you should do behind closed doors when no one sees you, understand? Where you're hard on them. But to be honest with you, I'll, you know, um, there's one coach in the Premier League that I will always admire, and that is Jurgen Klopp. I don't know why, man. Mm. Klopp, um, Klopp is just on that level where I would like to be, if I should retire, if I'm going to retire one day, I would like to be a coach like Jurgen Klopp, that no. father figure. Do you mm. know that? Where you can come talk to me if you have a problem. Man. Mm. You know what I mean? That no. I wouldn't just shout like I want to on the field, but mm. often when we go in, I'll give him a, you know, mm. behind closed doors, not in front of everyone, man. But so you I wouldn't would have just, so basic, so sorry to break your word. So you didn't agree what Pep did to Ireland on the opening weekend of the Prem before half time, and he, and he just goes, you know what I mean? It's not that I won't agree, D. It's just that is just their relationship. Ireland and Pep's relationship is nothing we can do from the outside. <laughs> uh, of um, course. I don't know if you know what I'm trying to say. No, I agree. From the no, outside, I agree. Because it's on TV, but Alan and Pip maybe have that bully and that fighting. You know, yeah, that's, this, yeah. I, I, that's the way. I, to make an example, there was a time where Kevin De Bruyne also shouted Pip last season. Mm. Shut up. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. You know, out but of that... frustration, but that is the bond that the two of them have. After the game, they were the best of friends again. Exactly. But going back to your question, I'll, I'll be a, a father figure man. I prefer okay. that is the best route to go with your players. And so if that players, if you're giving them that father, that father, father figure, um, coaching, if he still doesn't want to listen, then you just make him slowly out of your team, man. Just make him yeah. <laughs> bring him down. Just make That's him the best. best. Oh, wait, yeah. <laughs> Let's touch on the European football before I ask you about your expectations, the season, and that type of thing. What have you made about Manchester United, my brother? Yeah, slow, slow start, honestly. But you guys, always start, you, know, slow, no? you guys always start slow. Yeah, we started. I know, yeah, we started last season also slow. But for me, I'm looking for things to blame. And like, maybe, yeah, why do we go to USA? But there's a lot of teams that left England. And they're coming back and they're flying. You understand? Mm. And for me, regarding United, very, very slow start. And I feel regarding this, uh, the, the um, selling Fred. Can I just go back to this? I'm not saying... Yeah. <laughs> You know, when Fred was there, he was always un thrown under the bus. He was always, um, they always said this and that about you, but about him. But now that he's gone, now I can really see what type of player he was. Look how Casemiro was suffering now, bro. And he's, 
and exactly and Bruno and Mount is the same type of player. Exactly. <clears throat> They're leaving Casemiro exposed and it doesn't like, really need, like Max Shores need to come next to Casemiro now. There's no doubt about that. Do you understand? Mm. While Mount is injured now, bring Scott in next to Casemiro just to block that midfield man. Mm, you guys are open, we, are we really poor, honestly, poor start, but I still mm. feel Eric is the man for us and we're going to end in the top four. That's top five this year. I'm saying with I, a I you, you can take that piece no? and, and keep it for the end of the season. I don't worry, I'm as a said, part of the club, so we're having, we're having a bit next week, no? What we're betting on a bottle, a bottle of brandy? Yeah, Possibly yeah, you know, most, you know, most, as I, I what, Spot you know, most, Kavi you know, here. What is yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, club, 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 club drop premium, club drop premium, spot me. Okay, uh, the quality the one, season. that's. Yeah, the quality one, in the <laughs> off-season, in the Christmas break when you come down. But... <laughs> Yo, your red's going to be lekker, na. Eh? <laughs> so, mate, me, who's yes, here? Right? No, no, no. It's going to be geestelik, yo. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be <laughs> Last one before we close off, Gobs. Um, your expectations for your club this season and for yourself. Look, we have our own personal um, wager that we yeah. like to go with. But um, <laughs> for you personally, um, first, give me your club's expectations. What do you expect, expect from the club this year? Because obviously there is no Cape team. So I know for a fact I'm not going to see you. Um, oh. Just to touch on that, um, I got a lot of stick last year when you played against Cape Town Spurs and you know the bad odds. I remember that day um, Arsenal played Newcastle. So I was already in my lounge at three watching that game and the amount of messages that Cape people were messaging me and saying, hey, when you tell Greg if I see him, I'm going to F him up. Oh, <laughs> we need another Cape team in the PSL. He can't do this to us because you came on, you nearly scored, you made, you made the penalty, that type of thing. So, What's your expectations for La Masia this year, first and foremost? And obviously, give me Gregory Rules' expectations. Um, I'll give Gregory Rules' expectations afterwards. I'm first going to go to the team. No? Of course. I think um, this season, after what we went through last season, I think this season we are uh, yeah, more matured. So I, I feel that the club won't make the same mistakes that they made last season. So I feel this season we've assembled a really good technical team number one. And assembling a good technical team, I feel that we have assembled a very good squad. A squad of 30. 31, if I'm not mistaken. No. Serious. Very, very good squad, honestly. And I feel um, I feel that we can fight for a player spot this season if all goes well. Mm. If all goes well, we can really fight for a player spot this season and at least a good cup run. That's mm. our expectations for this season. Um, regarding my own expectation, um, I would like to get into double figures for the season if I could. But I'll go with eight goals and four assists. I was about to ask, is that, is that G and G A combined? No, that's what I was going to ask. That's combined. That is 12, contro- 12 goal enough. contributions this season. I think. Um, that's that's my because um, in our striking department, um, I'm, the, I'm the experienced one. <clears throat> so they've had five, ten minute talks with each player. What is your role for the season? Mm. So I've had my meeting and that is undisclosed. Um, I mean that you must keep private yeah, yourself. No, I'll keep it, I'll so keep I it. St- yeah, so, that, uh, so I know where I stand with the team. So injury-free, I would like to get um, 12 goal contributions this season. Fair enough. Say yeah. no more. Last one before <laughs> we go, before I wrap it up. What advice would you give um, to a youngster <clears throat> watching this now? What advice would you give to them so they can be at the age of 34 still playing at the highest level and be the next Gregory Roof, if not be better than the Gregory Roof himself? This is always the sweaty questions for anyone. Sweaty question yeah. for any ah, that's, my favorite adults, one. No? that's my favorite <laughs> one. I said it for last. <laughs> you should have I known this. Hard work. hard work. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's why I'm prepared. I would say hard work, Dean. Mm. To never give up and always believe in yourself. I feel if that three go together, stay disciplined. Um, choose your friends because, hey, in this game, if you choose the wrong friends, you can be out by the door tomorrow. Young. So mm. I'll stick with that five principles. And but mainly for me is to believe in yourself and have the faith and to never give up. Oh, fair enough. I couldn't have summed it up any better. Cobbs, I want to thank you for your <laughs> time, my brother. 
51 blood clot minutes, my bro. But it felt like we could go on talking for all this. So I want to thank you for your time. <laughs> I see <laughs> you over my life. I see huh? you over me as 49. 49 nah, minutes, okay. Me, you got the nah, right time. 51 no? minutes, but either way, it's borderlining on 50 minutes. So yeah, yeah. thank you for your time. That's always um, been a pleasure, dear. Nah, it's always um, been a pleasure. But you I'm must what jump in our say, streams that we have them for the fan debates. You must jump in our fan debate streams as well, no? Yeah, okay. You you must gonna keep me posted, no? I'll keep you posted, but yeah, love for the love, my brother. People, that's a wrap on episode six. It's Gregory Rolf, it's David D, and we are out of here. I am the one.